Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, viewers of all ages. Good day to you and welcome back to the channel. Glad you guys are here. This fine automobile is a 2017-18 Kia Rio, I believe. Yeah, I think it's the Rio. She has a four-cylinder engine. I believe it is of the 1.6 liter displacement. So one six four cylinder customer states that uh well they drove into some water how do i put this they were uh they were driving during our previous uh hurricane attempt and they drove this car into some water then the engine shut off and i guess they had to have it towed it was at the guy's house i think initially when it got towed out of the road and they had a mobile guy coming out trying to take a look at it and they couldn't seem to figure out why the thing wouldn't crank uh, suspecting there was an issue with the starter which you kind of can't get to unless you're up in the air uh, but my problem is is I don't see how a starter is going to make the engine stall while driving through water and then putting a starter in it's going to make it start again so we need to do a little bit of digging here um, I, I do not know if they've attempted to crank this vehicle and restart it I imagine that they have attempted to restart it but I'm not going to fake some footage uh, putting cameras on the engine and then starting it knowing I'm probably going to damage it So we're not going to attempt to start it now The reason the battery chargers on here is this thing was stone-cold dead uh, When it was dropped off it came in on the tow truck uh, yesterday I heard that one ingested some water because of the floods. That's nasty And it had no power. There was like four volts at the battery. So we threw the battery on there keyed the unit on and we managed to get the systems to power up on this thing here so we're going to key it on we have approximately 127,357 miles on the odometer it does have a check engine light on but the engine's not running so that may not be consequential at this time uh here inside of the cabin we got a couple uh couple bad signs here i found a an air filter and we also found some jumper cables on the floorboard so that leads me to believe that there is a possibility that the uh the owners of this car or the driver or, or the folks that were trying to work on it earlier had attempted to start this vehicle uh by jump starting and uh various other methods so we're gonna do some some common sense evaluation here because i do believe we have an issue with water ingestion now if we take a look here at our air box look at there that's disconnected that's disconnected we're very disconnected and I'm pretty sure we're not going to find an air filter in here. Yeah, that's a negative. Is there any water left over? Yeah, I don't see... I don't see any water in here. However, it's been about a week or so since the hurricane action took place. So what I think we need to do here is we're going to pull these ignition coils off top of the engine. And I'm going to pull the spark plugs out. And we're going to look for some water inside of this thing. So, stay tuned. This should be a very good uh, diagnostic video. Okay, since clearly I suspect that this engine has ingested some water, uh, the only logical place for it to be at this point is in the combustion chambers. I certainly hope you guys would uh, agree with that assessment. So, we're going to go and find out by removing... Ooh, that's a valve cover gasket leaker. We're gonna remove all this business right here and see how much water is down in the hole. Let's get this hose business off of here. Put that over yonder. This is a connector for the high pressure fuel pump. So this is a direct injection engine. High pressure pumps down here under this uh, piece of foam. See that little guy right there? That runs off of one of the cams to, to take our low pressure fuel and change it up into high pressure fuel, similar to a diesel, so the injectors can utilize said high pressure fuel. So anyway, plugs are all still in the holes. You never know. Sometimes people might, uh, they remove things. And then don't put them back together. It happens. Like an air filter. Uh, okay. We're not off to a good start here, people. 
Not off to a good start at all. Hang on. So we are locating uh, valuable forensic evidence here. So we're just going to put this stuff right here and keep it nice and sanitary. Let's, uh, let's yank those other three plugs out real quick like. That one's loose. Yeah, not looking good. That one's loose. That one's dry. This one's loose. And okay, that's not looking good either. Okay, so taking a closer inspection here at these spark plugs, I, I can say I have not seen any that are this bad in quite some time. Look at all that sludgy business. It's liquidy. There's like a some kind of water or an oil on there. Debris everywhere. You can't even see the electrode. This one looks okay-ish, except that would be recommended to replace just based on condition. This one here, that's a little worse. Very nasty. And then this one over here, that's equally nasty and tore up. Look at that guy. It's not okay. So that's the condition of the spark plugs. I'm gonna fetch a boroscope and we're gonna go down inside of these spark plug holes here and see what else we can see. Okie doke, so I've got a boroscope here fired up and ready to rock and roll. It's basically the camera uh, on the end of this little flexi tube with a screen here so we can see the engine that we're looking right at. I'll turn it that way. Yep, see, there it is, same engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this probie business here and we're gonna go down into these spark plug holes and see what kind of carnage has occurred down inside of the combustion chambers. Okay, so bear with me here. This is gonna be hard to coordinate and all that good stuff. But we are going down into the number one spark plug hole right down yonder. See the light going in and Here's what we can see. So right now, right from the get-go, at the bottom of the screen, we're looking at two intake valves. And a little farther down, there is our piston surface. And look at that. There's water right on it. Right on that surface. That's not okay. Yeah, that one's chowdered up pretty bad. I don't see like a hole in it or anything. It definitely got cleaned out. Let's move over to the next one. Right down inside of there we go. Real tight squeeze, see that? This one, this piston's up at the top of its throw right now, so that's kind of tough to see, but I see some water on that one. Now, number three, that spark plug looks good. Let's check this next hole. Well, although the spark plug looked good, the rest of it doesn't. Look at that. A lot of carbon, some nasty in there. Little bits of water. Let's go to the next one. Do, 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 do. It's time clock time. Next one going in. There's a bunch of water in that one too. Yeah, I see water everywhere. Okay, tell you what. Let's see if this thing's even uh, capable of operating. Uh, I think what I want to do is I'm going to go inside and hit the key. That battery should be charged enough to uh, get this motor to turn over. So let's crank it and see if we can't fire out the rest of the water that's in there. Then we'll blow it all out and then I'll clean these spark plugs up here and we can see if this thing has the uh, capability of running. Actually, let me back up. We're going to blow it out first, turn it over, turn it over, blow it out with air and then I'm gonna put a compression gauge on it and we're gonna see if it builds compression. We should do that, because this thing might have bent rods in it. Okay, I'm gonna go inside, hit the key, and we're gonna see if this engine turns over. Uh, if it does, it might shoot some water out, but what we need to determine is if any internal damage has occurred that will prevent the engine from rotating round, 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 baby, right round. Make sense? Because I can't do a compression test if it doesn't turn over. So let's hit it. Key on. Beginning cranking sequence now. Okay, yeah. It has water in it. There's like a... 
quite a bit of water in there actually. Let me get it again just to finish it off. There might be some in the intake. just doesn't stop oh man this is not cool this thing's I'll be surprised if it lives again you guys remember the other day when I drove my truck through a big pile of water and I said do not drive through water this will destroy your engine this is what I meant when I said that more water yeah that's what i meant do not drive through water you suck up water in your engine this is what you might do to said engine so let's uh let's take this air gun here we're gonna blow these uh these pistons out just a little bit more get down in there That's not good. Did you see that? I blew air in here and it came out over there. Yeah, oh, we're, this is not okay. It just keeps getting more water. Where does all this water come from and why? Is there a drain on the bottom of the intake manifold? Yeah, this isn't looking good. Uh, this hole right here should never be communicating with this hole right here. Those are those are separate holes and should not be. Uh, it shouldn't be talking to each other. That's not okay. I am. Uh, I'm gonna go and hit the key one more time. See if we can blast anything else out of this. All right, one more time. Let's see what happens. Is it gonna crank? I think it's uh, sucking water in. There's probably more in the intake. Fun. Okay, let's find out if we have bent rods or not. So we've got a uh, got a compression gauge right here. It's an old school unit. I bought this in 2002 from the Matco truck for a hundred and some change dollars. It was like 160 bucks. I don't know why I remember the prices of tools, but I do. Yeah, what's with that? I can't remember like where I just sat that down when I turned around and walked away, but I can remember trivial, minuscule things from 20 something years ago, right? I don't, don't comprende. Anyway, let's, uh, let's hit the key on this thing and we're gonna see what kind of compression we get out of cylinder number one. So Justin's here, he's gonna help. He's gonna go inside and crank. I'm gonna wash the combustion chamber water off your face. There we go. All right, man, go ahead and crank it. Two, three, zero. We have no compression. That's not too good start. Let's go all the way up to number four. We'll try that one next. All right, man, hit it. That's not making compression. Let's check something real quick. Hit it again. Yeah. Again? Hmm, hang on, something's not making sense to me here. This thing should be going and it's not. Here, I'm gonna just remove the little Schrader core in the bottom of the tube here. This is here to hold compression in the gauge. That way it pumps up and up and up and stays there. We're just trying to determine if there's anything here uh, with regards to engine compression. So now there's no valve in it. So if there is compression being built, what it's gonna do is it will pump up, but then the gauge itself will just fall right back down. Okay, Justin, hit it again. Okay, there we go. All right, stop. I don't know why. Maybe that little valve's not working. All right, hit it again. Yeah, it's not looking that great. 
Okay, I'm gonna throw a new valve in this. Apparently my valve is faulty or something, or compression's just super low. It can't be faulty, look at that, it works. Yeah, it's just got stupid low compression. So here, valve's back in. Tie that guy down. Let's try cylinder two. Did we try number two yet? I don't recall. Hit it again. I'm kind of getting something, not really. One more time. I'm not getting anything here. This one was 30 PSI with the valve removed. Let's try it again. Hit it. Yeah, this, uh, this engine's toast. We have no compression across the board. Hit it again. Yeah. All right. So I'm still in moderate disbelief here. So I'm putting in a new Schrader tool. Get that new one installed. Just, just to be thorough on this uh, little evaluation here. I mean, I, I realize that it's pretty clear what the story is, but. Got to be thorough. Let's try number four. That one seemed like it was doing the best. All right. Justin, one more time. Hit it. Yeah, there's nothing here. Hit it again. Nothing. We, we got no, nothing. Nobody home. This engine has no compression. But you know what it does have? Watch this. Let me turn the lights off real quick. Powering down. Make it dark. Watch this over here. Hit it again. Hit it again. It needs ignition coils too. Let's see if the belt broke. I don't see why it would, but if we can see that camshaft down there, that'll tell us if the belt's breaking. See right there at the bottom of the hole. Hit it one more time. Okay, now we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, so the belt or slash timing chain, whatever this has is not broken. Uh, there's catastrophic internal damage to this engine. Don't know what that looks like inside, uh, but it's there. So we either need to put a new one in it or pull this one out and uh, undergo a massive repair. Uh, having said all that though, there's nothing more I'm gonna do to this car today of any kind of significance or consequence or entertainment value or educational value for that matter uh, for you guys to witness. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. Uh, I will do this as always by having a moment of silence for another fallen Kia motor. And that will conclude the ending of this video. So you guys, thanks as always for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video. Do not drive through water in a transmission in a engine. That's a new one.